This video will be broken up into a few sections. And if you are watching this for the second time, you can easily jump to the correct section if you just hover your mouse on the timeline of the video at the bottom and also in the description of the video. Welcome to the guide where I will teach you on how to get into bossing in old school RuneScape so you can enjoy and experience a major part of the game and create an awesome account. I believe I have the insight to best guide you. Here is a bit about me if you are new. I have spent thousands of hours bossing throughout my many years of RuneScape since 2005. You may have heard of my Iron Man account named Mr. Iron Bar. I've done pretty much every PVM extensively and collected most of the major drops on that account. I have spent a lot of time on this guide, so if you do find this guide to be helpful to you, please consider liking the video. Part 1 General Guidelines So the first guide is going to cover the pre-bossing checklist, the main things you need to focus and work on before you can reach the bossing stages. The main components would be questing, which includes stuff like diaries and minigames, money making, gearing, and finally training. Order is not too important, but if you must follow something, I recommend something like this. Also note that the order is more of a loose idea because a lot of these components end up happening at the same time. But in general, all accounts typically focus on questing as a first priority, as it unlocks new areas, gives fast levels, and unlocks important gear. After questing, you will be mixing in money making, gearing, and training at the same time. For example, you need money to buy gear and you need gear so you can train. This applies to both normal and Iron Man mode. For Iron Man mode though, money is less significant because you must get some gear as a drop rather than buying it from the GE. Let's talk about the questing and miscellaneous grinds as the first component. You're going to have to do quests. No escaping this one, but luckily there's guides out on YouTube like Slayer Music's video quest guides. Also, Runelite has the Quest Hopper plugin, which makes questing brain dead easy as it just shows where you need to click. It's my preferred one. The only quests that may be challenging are the ones with boss fights like Dragon Slayer 2, Monkey Madness 2, and some of the else. But those are also pretty easy with the proper guides and setup. I will put additional links to help you with those more difficult ones in the description. The bulk of your questing is going to be completing all the recipe for disaster quests for unlocking the Barrow's Gloves. Barrow's Gloves is the overall best gloves in the game and completing the quest will unlock a ton of important content for bossing like Ancient Magics. Recipe for disaster requires 175 quest points. 86 of them comes from working towards the quest itself. So you need to do 89 quest points worth of outside quests. Over half of all available quests will be done by this point. Quest order don't matter too much, but if you want something to guide you, I'll have a link in the description for you to roughly follow. Also, the page that I will be linking in the description is handy for showing you all the overall benefits of certain quests, like certain teleports, like ectophile, or like certain non-combat XP. Don't worry too much about the quest order. You can definitely nitpick and do it your own way because you're not really going to save that much time doing it a particular way, so don't worry about it. As long as you get the points for the gloves, you're good. Now, I'm going to mention some specific quests that are really important for unlocking certain bosses and certain items, so let's cover the quest to unlock certain bosses. Here we go. Dragon Slayer 2 unlocks Warcath. It's a medium high-level boss. Monkey Madness 2 unlocks Demonic Grills, which is a medium-level somewhat of a boss. Some of the elves unlocked the Gauntlet and the Corrupted Version, which is considered mostly high level. Regicide, which unlocks Zora, is a medium to high level boss. Priest and Peril unlocks Mauritania Region, which further unlocks the Barrow's minigame, which is a low level boss. Theater Blood, high level boss. And the Nightmare, high level boss. Now I'm going to cover certain quests that you should do to unlock certain items in certain spellbooks. We have Animal Magnetism, which unlocks the Ava's Accumulator, one of your best range capes in the game. And we have Lost City, which unlocks Dragon Dagger, which is a very affordable special attack melee weapon. Hero's Quest, which unlocks Dragon Battle Axe, which is a really good special weapon for boosting your strength bonus. Monkey Madness unlocks Dragon Skimitar, one of your most reliable training melee weapons. Elemental Workshops 1 and 2 unlocks Elemental and Mind Shield for Wyvern tasks. 
Haunted Mine and Tarn Razor minigame, unlocks its South Amulet and its Enchanted version. Major Arena 1 and 2 minigame unlocks the God Cape and the Imbue version as well. Warrior Guild Cyclops, you kill them for the Metal Defenders up to the Dragon Defender. Freemanic Trials for Berserker Helmet, Freemanic Isles for the Nate to Helmet. They're all best in slot melee helms according to their levels. Underground Pass, which unlocks Ivan's Staff, so you can use the Ivan's Blast, very powerful mage spell at level 50 mage. Horror from the Deep gives God Books, good prayer bonus, and you can use it for Godward's Protection. Slug Menace, which unlocks Proselyte Armor, which is really good prayer bonus armor for certain combat scenarios like Slayer Training. Death Plateau for Climbing Boots, Early Melee Boots. Family Crest for Chaos Gauntlets, really good for Early Mage Training. Desert Treasure unlocks Ancient Magics, and for Iron Man you can get an Ancient Staff to auto-cast your Ancient Spells. And Lunar Diplomacy, which unlocks the Lunar Spellbook for stuff like Vengeance, Cure Me Spell. And there's some additional quests that Iron Man have to do because you have to get those items as a drop. So we have Cabin Fever for the Black Mass drop, of course for Slayer Tasks from the Cave Horrors. Lost Tribe, which unlocks Dorgish and Crossbow, really, really good early range training weapon. Taurus Trap, so that you can actually make darts for your ventral blowpipe. And I also want to mention Sins of Father, so you can get the Blood Shard. Because this guide is meant for beginner PVMers, I just assume you're probably learning how to do a lot of bosses eventually. And the Blood Shard is really good to get for learning melee bossing like Bandos, stuff like that. Now let me cover some diary rewards that you can do to better prepare for bossing. I will say the diaries are nowhere near as important as the questing themselves. Just because the diaries, a lot of the good rewards, tend to take a lot longer to get ready for. Here's the notable ones. Already easy diary, you should get this early probably for the Arty Cloak. It's a really good cape for just traveling and like prayer restoration. It's also near Fairy Ring, so super nice. And you have the Desert Harnley Diaries. This gives you permanent ropes and shortcut to the Calphite Queen. So this is a much later one. Mortainer Hard Diary for the Bone Crusher for Perex being 50% more runes from Barrow's Chest. Pretty good for like mid-level stage when you start doing Barrow's. And you have the Western Hard Diary for the Elite Void top and bottom, which makes your Void a little bit stronger. And also the Crystal Halberd as well, which is good for like high-level PVMing. And you also get one Zora revive a day, so nice to have for Zora. Faldor Hard Diary gives your shield the locate option for Giant Mo, which is pretty nice for... Yeah. Freemake Elite Diary is really good for the noted Dagonoth King's Bones, so if you plan on doing a lot of Dagonoths, at some point definitely think about getting that one, because the bones are a lot of money, or a lot of prayer XP. Kandarin Hard Diary increases your chance of Enchanted Bolts activating its effect, like Diamond Bolts going from 10% proc rate to like 11%. Pretty good for long-term bossing. There's a bunch of other small ones that are related to PVM, but I'm not going to mention them. They're not too important. If you want a full list, I will put a link in the description, though, that shows all the rewards. So the next component we're going to talk about is training. Training your combat stats is going to be essential to bossing preparations. Now, obviously, there's different difficulties of bosses, and, of course, the stat requirements will be a bit different. For example, Barrels is quite doable at like 60 range of magic for the casual player. And for like end game bossing, I highly recommend you eventually get base 90s all melee magic range. And for prayer, at least 77, preferably higher. But yeah, that's the gist of it. I will explain more about stats requirement for each of the bosses when I cover it on the second guide the bossing ladder guide in the future. If you are unsure of what combat stat to train first, as in you don't have a preference, I would recommend training melee first or focusing a bit more on melee as it is overall the easiest of the three styles and plus you have to train more skills for that single style. Whereas magic is just magic, range is just range. Melee is attack, strength and defense as well. Before you commit to some serious long-term training though, I definitely recommend you rush some early quests that can really speed up some early levels in your combat-related stats. I recommend rushing the following quests, Waterfall Quest, Vampire Slayer, Death Plateau, Fight Arena, Grand Tree, 
Trinum Village, Merlin's Crystal, Holy Grail, Witch's House, and Dragon Slayer. And maybe a few other ones that might come out in the future, or I might have missed. But those ones are really notable ones. If you do do these quests, you'll probably get like base 40s and like melees and like 30 plus prayer or something like that. So yeah, it's really worth it. Skips a lot of training, which does save a bit of time. So how does training usually work? There is different styles, I would say. There's like the AFK style, there's the active style, and there's a mix of a bit of both. AFK methods is pretty straightforward. You just let your character auto retaliate at a certain place and train that way. So you can read a book, watch a show, do homework on the side. So the AFK style involves training at a few key places. You can AFK for five to 10 minutes at a time before having to look at the game. The first spot is Sand Crabs in Southern Hosidius which is a part of the Zaya region. They are the best low level AFK spot for all combat styles. You can train there as early as you want. Just go to a spot that has two to three crabs and AFK away in the middle. If you lose aggro, just go far away and come back. Another spot is the island you can get to with the boat in the same area that costs 10,000 GP. You could technically get max stats here, but I don't recommend it. Now the next spot is Ammonite crabs. They're basically sand crabs, but they require the completion of Bone Royal Arch Crest, which takes a bit of grinding to access, but they are better XP per hour because they have higher HP. They're located in the northern parts of Fossil Island. Same strat as Sand Crabs, just hug a bunch of them and be in the middle. So the final spot that I recommend is the Nightmare Zone minigame. It's quite complicated, so uh, yeah, listen carefully. You have to complete at least 5 quests that have bosses to use this content. The five minimum quest suggestions are Ascent of Arceus, Vampire Slayer, Deaths of Despair, Lost City, and Trinum Village. Basically, Nightmare Zone will generate the bosses that you fought from quests so that you can fight them. And these are the best ones for training. I recommend getting at least 70 base stats before using this Nightmare Zone. For the first trip of Nightmare Zone, you will need to use prayer potions to block damage. Once you accumulate enough Nightmare Zone points, you can buy and use Absorption Potions, which will negate damage from the bosses, allowing you to AFK for very long periods. You want to have a Rock Cake or a DS2 located ore for Nightmare Zone. Rock Cake is the easiest to get. With a combination of Rock Cake or the Locator Orb combined with the Overload Potion, you can get yourself to 1 HP. Absorption Potions absorb damage taken, so keeping yourself at 1 HP using Rock Cake will make your Absorption Potions last longer. I also recommend Hard Mumble Mode for the best experience. Keep in mind that you're going to need a lot of Nightmare Zone points to imbue stuff like your Warrior's Ring, Berserker Ring, Slur Helm, Salve Amulet, which is all best in slot items. So you're going to have to come here at some point. You can AFK all the way to base 90s using these methods, but I highly, highly recommend that you also try to focus on doing some active style methods because you will eventually need to do it if you want to maximize all the bossing slash money making possibilities. And now let's talk about the active style of training. Active style is basically Slayer style. You're basically training through Slayer. <laughs> that is pretty much it. As fancy as it sounded, yeah, it's just Slayer. You can train all your combat styles through Slayer, pretty much. Slayer Masters will assign a task for you to kill and you can accumulate Slayer XP as a bonus during Slayer tasks. You can also wear Black Mask or Slayer Helm during your task, which will provide a large damage and accuracy bonus of around 15% towards your task. If you imbue the Helm through Nightmare Zone, the boost will also work for range and magic styles too. Definitely recommend doing that. I recommend focusing on this general route a lot more once you reach 75 combat, so you can use Childer, Slayer Master as a minimum. You definitely can go earlier if you wish. At 85 combat, you do want to use Neve slash Steve in Gnome Stronghold. At 100 combat, you want to use Duradel in Shala Village. Now there's the question of Konar. Now Konar is really annoying in terms of Slayer experience because she'll assign tasks that makes you kill them exclusively at like a really scuffed spot. So I don't recommend using her unless it's on the 50th task because she gives a very high uh, Slayer points per task, so the prestige is worth it at 50. I don't recommend prestiging her at 10th task because they're usually so bad that you will usually waste the points that you would get otherwise to skip it, so it wouldn't really work out. 
Every time you do a Slayer task, you can gain Slayer points after the fifth task, as long as you don't reset. You get bonus Slayer points for completing every 10 tasks, and the highest point bonus is every 250 tasks. There are a bunch of really good benefits that you can unlock with Slayer points too, and here's a rough order of recommendation for what to unlock. Again, you don't need to follow this exact order, but bigger and badder is usually the first thing that people unlock because superior creatures are really good Slayer XP, and you can also get rare items like Imbue Heart, which sells for a lot of money, or you can use it for self, which boosts magic power, and other things like Slayer Gem, the Eternal One, for the Eternal Slayer Ring. Then it's usually Slayer Helmet so that you can keep the damage boost for certain mobs that otherwise you could not use a black mass on, such as Dust Devils. Then you probably want to unlock Slayer Ring so that you can actually do a lot of your tasks more conveniently because it teleports you to a lot of the hot spots like Slayer Tower, Rebecca Slayer Dungeon, etc. And for Iron Man, you probably want to unlock Broad Animals at this point because you want to most likely train with Broad uh, bolts at some point or broad arrows I guess for Karas and stuff and you can also extend certain tasks or unlock certain tasks with the remainder of your points after that and you can unlock avian seed so that you can actually do that boss in the you know distant future as a slayer task for the slayer hunt benefits some other notable unlocks would be the czar as a slayer task because they're really good xp and other things Maybe like Kraken if you want to extend them so that you increase your chance of getting a trident for like Iron Man. But yeah, depending on what you want to do, there's a bunch of different options for you to unlock and extend. And at some point, you can also unlock Rune Pouch, which also holds a lot of runes. I don't really recommend it through Slayer if you can PvP, because you can also get it from the Last Man Standing minigame if you like to PvP. Otherwise, yeah, just through Slayer. And Herb Sack is good too to hold the herbs that you get from Slayer Tasks. Save some inventory space. Now, I do recommend you getting it from Type Farm minigame instead in Zaya Hosidius because it is faster. So, yeah, you're better off saving your points for other things like skipping tasks at that point. Now, there are a lot of optimizations that you can do for Slayer for faster XP. And yeah, here's some notable ones. Let's talk about some Slayer XP tips. First one is investing in Slaughter Bracelets. They allow you to extend tasks. Wear them for good XP tasks or boss tasks that you want to make longer. It increase your overall amount by 33% if you are wearing the bracelets. Now that also leads to some good XP tasks that you most likely will want to use your Slaughter Bracelets for, such as Ancient Magic tasks like Dust Devils, Necrails, Abyssal Demons. In the Zero Catacombs and Smoke Devils. If you use Ancient Magics, you can group them up and yeah, they're really good XP, one of the best in the game. So using Slaughters will make that even better. Now for Abyssal Demons though, uh, do try not to use Ice Barrage or Ice Burst because it makes it worse. Something like Shadow is good. Specific task extensions using Slayer Points is also another really good tip. Tasks like Dust Devils can be extended naturally by buying the ability at any Slayer Master. I highly recommend extending things like Dust Devils and Necrails for fast Slayer XP because you can mod them with Ancient Magics. This goes along really well with the Slaughter Bracelets. Now let's talk about bad tasks. How do you handle bad tasks? That's where the Expeditious Bracelet comes in. They're the opposite of Slaughter Bracelets. You want to wear them for tasks that are bad XP but not necessarily worth skipping all the time. Iron Man's may find this a bit more useful as mains have an easier time cannoning a lot of tasks that would otherwise suck, such as Suquas. For mains that don't use cannon or irons, wear this for things like Hellhounds, Elves, Aberrant Spectres, Middle Dragons, Suquas, Kelp Fights, etc. So there's a lot of tasks that are, again, considered good if you have a cannon, but yes, that's for mains with a lot of extra capital. The next thing I want to talk about are skipping certain tasks. It's pretty preference just because everybody hates some tasks a bit differently. But I do recommend skipping tasks that you would normally use Expeditions Bracelet, but for some reason, you just don't want to do them today. Sometimes Slayer Masters might give you the same task over and over again, so this is one of those good times to skip some super repetitive tasks. 
Now we cover block lists. Same reason for being preference is just that some people hate certain tasks more than others, so you want to just block based on experience. Now some general recommendations are Black Demons, Iron Dragons, and Steel Dragons. They usually are uh, popularly blocked because they're so slow at times, especially at low levels. And the last tip I want to talk about is the cannon. I only recommend this for normal accounts, as making cannonballs usually is not worth it for the average Ironman because it just takes too long. If you can't afford the cannon though as a normal account, cow fights in cow fights Slayer Cave, Suquas, Black Demons, Square Demons, at Chasm of Fire, Diagonal's Lighthouse, and some other spots are really good. I recommend Slaughter Bracelets if you're gonna do the cannon task. Now let's quickly cover per training as that is pretty important as well. So for normal accounts, your best bet is to buy Dragon Bones. And you want to use those Dragon Bones at somebody's Gilded Altar in World 330 Remington House Portal. There will usually be a host and you can find the host by checking the booth next to the House Portal. Simply enter their name and use your bones on the altar and you will gain a large sum of experience versus bearing. You only need a few hundred D bones to get to 43 prayer and 77 later on will cost a few mil. Now another option is to train using insole heads at RCS altar in Zaya. It's slower but it is a lot cheaper. However, you do need 60% favor in house RCS and you can get that through the library minigame. Probably best to use giant insole heads and above. And of course the higher tier insole heads will cost a bit more. Now let's cover Iron Man accounts. Your best bet is to kill green dragons in level 20 wilderness if you wish to train all the way to 77 prayer or higher. Using a looting bag is good because you get twice the inventory and it's recommended to get both the hides and the bones. Easy way to get there is a games necklace to Corp Beast Cave and then you want to run to the west of the entrance. I recommend using at least a Dragon Scimitar or ranging with RCB MSB. You can keep 3 items upon dying, but make sure to turn off your player attack option so you don't skull. Here's some other things to be aware of for Iron Man prayer training. Now you can do one small favor quest to get all the way to 43 prayer using the lamps if you did all the rush quests in the training section as I recommended, like Holy Grail. If prayer training is harder for you than herb training, then you can use the lamps on prayer. You should also collect insole heads from Slayer and use them to train your prayer in addition. By 85 Slayer, you'll probably have enough heads to help you get to 70 prayer for piety, which is really important. For normal Iron Man, you can use Ectofunctus if you do not like the Wilderness. However, I do recommend using the Wilderness Altar as it has the bones you need to achieve the same level goals. Now for the Wilderness Altar, make sure to bring a suicide item like the Enchanted Symbol that you get from the Mage Training Arena 2 or the Locator Orb from Dragon Slayer 2 so you can die faster and bank faster. Easy teleport to the Wally Altar is a Burning Amulet or the Ice Plateau Teleport. Bring D high top and a shield for no risk tanking. For Hardcore Iron Man, the safest way to use your bones will be to combine it with the Ecto Functus prayer training method in Port Fast Mattis. You want to grind your bones and offer the bone meal at the altar for best XP. Also, Blue Dragons and Tavli are safest for bones for Hardcore Iron Man. Part 3 Training Gear I will try to keep it simple and give you a good idea of roughly what kind of equipment you should use for training based on a reasonable budget and levels. I will split up the training setups based on the combat style and based on the account mode. Regardless of the budget and combat style, the most important gear for training is your weapon. Think of the weapon as over 50% of the overall gear importance. Accessories and armor just isn't that big of a deal compared to the weapon, so focus your time and money on the weapon first. Here are some universal combat tips. If you are training to Slayer, you will most likely be wearing a Black Mass imbued or Slayer Helm imbued because of that 15% damage and accuracy boost on Slayer task. Also, your amulet will most likely stay the same. You're predominantly going to be wearing a Power Amulet, then upgrade to a Glory, and then a Fairy Amulet just simply based on how much money you have, Fairy being the most expensive. Also, gloves tend to be just about the same throughout. You're most likely going to be wearing a combat bracelet and then if not that you'll be wearing some sort of recipe for disaster gloves maybe like mithril version but ultimately you'll have the barrels version from all the quests that you do so throughout this section of the video where i talk about the items anything that's highlighted in red are must-have items items are so good and worth your time 
I will talk about things that aren't highly in Reddit just to give you an idea of what you could be getting in the future, such as like more endgame stuff. Now let's talk about the gear in detail. First we'll cover the melee gear. So we're gonna cover melee weapons first. From 1 to 60 attack, your standard weapons will be bronze all the way up to a rune scimitar. If you rush the suggested quest in the training session, you should be able to wield rune scimitar right away. You also want to train to at least 50 to 60 strength and around 40 defense with a rune scimitar. For Iron Man though, I recommend killing Zamrak Warriors at the Arania Altar for a rune scimitar with Fire Strike and Safe Spawn them. It's actually a lot faster than Fire Giants, the traditional way. Now once you reach 60 attack, you will hopefully complete Monkey Madness by now and you will have access to the Dran Scimitar. You will use that Scimitar to train strength to 70, followed by 70 attack and then defense. For Iron Man, you will be doing a ton of Slayer before you get the whip, so with the Dran Scimitar, your strength will probably be in the 80s and 90s. Attack's probably gonna be in the 80s and defense at least in the 70s. Now once you hit 70 attack, you will either get 85 Slayer to get a whip if you're an Iron Man, or buy it if you're a normal count. I recommend training on controlled style with the whip as it will train all three. You should already have at least 70 attack strength and defense by this time. You can comfortably max out your melee stats with a whip to 90 plus. Now there are better weapons for melee training outside of a whip like Garazi Rapier and the Blade of Saldor. However, on a normal account, it's far too expensive for a beginner. And for an Iron Man, it's really difficult to get because they come from extremely high level bosses. I just want to throw them out there just to kind of give you an idea of what to expect in the future if you wish to get farther into the game. But anyways, let's talk about melee armor now. Your melee top and bottom for training is going to be rune armor at 40 defense. And then you want to switch to dragon armor at 60 defense. And barrels armor, I prefer Tarax top and bottom for the price at 70 defense, but things like Guthans and Dorax will also work. Now there's also Fighter Torso from Barbarian Assault 40 defense. It's a good option for most training spots, but it's not super important and requires teamwork, so if you don't really you know, want to do teamwork stuff, then don't worry about it. For the helmets, you're going to be rocking a Rune Helmet at 40 defense, Berserker Helmet at 45 defense, Nades Hits Not Helmet at 55, and Slayer Helmet when on Slayer tasks. For shields, you're going to be rocking either Rune Kite or Rune Defender at 40 defense. And then Obsidian Shield or Dragon Defender at 60 defense. Defenders will be usually better for training than the Kite and Obby option because most mobs don't require much defense so it's better to focus more on offense. For the boots, you're going to be rocking Climbing Boots at 1 defense. And then finally Rune Boots at 40 defense and Dragon Boots at 60 defense. Now on an Iron Man, you need to get Rune Boots at 80 Slayer and Dragon Boots at 83 Slayer. That's unboosted, you could boost. For Gloves, you're going to be rocking Combat Bracelet and then eventually you will be doing the RFD quests and get yourself all the way up to Barrow's Gloves. On an Iron Man, you're probably gonna stick exclusively to RFD Gloves. Mytho Gloves is a nice one to somewhat rush for and then eventually Barrow's Gloves. For the cape, you don't really need to worry too much about the cape, but if you want a cape, Arty Cloak is nice from the diaries. And then if you want to attack or jab, Fire Cape is also good. Now the amulet is very standard, it's just going to go by price. Now if you want to go above that, you can also get a torture, but that's way more expensive. Now for an Iron Man, all these amulets require crafting levels. Glory at a minimum is 75 crafting with a boost, 85 for Fury with a boost. And the torture is even higher, crafting. And you also need to learn how to do demonic gorillas. Now for the ring, you can get yourself a warrior's ring or berserker ring. Warrior ring is the cheapest option, berserker ring is a lot more expensive. But berserker ring is recommended if you can afford it. And on an Iron Man, unfortunately both these rings have to be obtained from killing Diagon Rex, a medium level boss. So that might give you some motivation to want a PVM. Now that all the melee stuff is covered, we're going to move on to the range gear. If you wish to skip early range training, you can do Shadow of the Storm quest and get from anywhere around 1 to 27 range in an instant. However, early range is pretty easy if you don't want to quest. So for the range weapons, I'm going to be talking about the normal mode first because it's actually really different from Iron Man mode. 
So for normal mode, you want to start off with either iron knives or darts to 20 range. They're really, really cheap and really effective. At 20 range, you're going to upgrade to mithril darts. They are super cheap. Darts work best on AFK spots like sand crabs and anamite crabs. There are some other options that are magic shortbow with rune arrows at 50 range to 75 if you want to do stuff like nightmare zone or slayer tasks. Magic shortbow packs way more accuracy, so that means you can train at places that has a bit more defense. At 75 range, you're going to buy yourself a blowpipe with Addy darts, and you can use it all the way to 90 plus, even max. Blowpipe will just be good about anywhere. Now, if you are rich, you do have the option to buy red chins or black chins, and you can use those chins at the Skeletal Monkeys in Monkey Madness Training Spot, or the Maniacal Monkeys Training Spot in Monkey Madness 2 Quest. Chins are the fastest range XP in the game, but they are incredibly expensive. If you are rich also and you want to train through Slayer, you can also use a cannon to get additional experience on a lot of your Slayer tasks like Black Demon tasks or Greater Demon tasks. So yeah, those last two options are only for people with somehow exuberant amounts of money. For most of you guys watching this guy, you're probably not going to be using chins or cannons. Now let's talk about ranged weapon training for Iron Man mode. I do suggest using normal short bows till 5 range. You can buy all the bows up to maple from the Varak Archery Shop, by the way. Oak bow from 5 to 20, willow short bow from 20 to 28. It's okay to use something like bronze arrows because these early levels are super fast so it'll be fine. At 28 range I recommend using a bone crossbow with bone bolts. After death to Dorkashun, it's very cheap and very powerful and a considerable upgrade from the previous weapons. At 40 range you can use a huge short bow. You can get that from clue squirrels medium or you make it yourself with fletching. And you can pair it with rune arrows. At 50 range, you can swap to a magic short bow, which you can get from hard clues or you make it yourself. I only recommend this option though if you do like last man standing PvP minigame because you can buy a lot of rune arrows for really cheap. Now at 61 range, you can start using a rune crossbow, which is most commonly obtained from crazy archaeologists. And you're going to be pairing the rune crossbow with raw bolts, which you unlock with slayer after 55 slayer and 55 fletching. Rune Crossbow is your main weapon of choice outside of MSP with Rune Arrows until you can do Zora for the Blowpipe. Self making a Rune Crossbow is tedious so this is probably an option I only recommend for hardcores that don't want to risk going to the wilderness to get the RCB. At 75 range you will be able to use the Blowpipe but a lot of you guys that are Iron Man starting off probably won't have the Blowpipe until much much later just because yeah it's really difficult to do Zora for the first time at 75. Let's talk about range armor. Luckily, armor is really straightforward for both Iron Man and normal counts. You're going to be going about the same route pretty much. So from 1 to 20, you can use the regular leather chap body van braces, but you don't really need armor at this point. It's not that important. You can also just do Shadow of the Storm again, which will bypass the early levels, and you can use studded leather body and top all the way to 40 range. Now Iron Man, you're going to be buying that armor from the Varak Armor Shop. Now, from 40 to 50, you're going to be rocking the green D high armor. And for Iron Man, you're going to be buying those from the Champion Skilled and Oziac. 50 to 60 is blue dragon high armor. Now, for Iron Man, you're probably just going to skip the blue just because it's not really worth the effort grinding, crafting to make it. But hey, if you want to, you can. But yeah, you can just honestly green D high all the way to 70. Now for normal count, 60 to 70, just go with the red dragon armor. So it's the same items basically, just replace the colors. And from 70 to 90, you're going to be rocking the black DI armor or the god DI variants. And honestly, you can just go all the way to 99 if you want. Now for Iron Man, to obtain the black DI armor and god DI armor, you're going to have to do clue scrolls, the hard clues specifically. And it's pretty easy to get the regular Black D high from Hard Clues. Probably 5 to 10 Hard Clues, you'll get the entire set of Chaps, Body, and Vampires. And eventually you will get God D highs because you're probably going to do enough Hard Clues for it. So you might be asking, how does Void Range work? Where does that fit into the training? So it's a very specific use. Void Range sacrifices a ton of accuracy for more additional max hits, usually like 1 or 2 over black dehyde so it's good on things that have almost no defense like rock crabs and sand crabs and stuff like that and also of course when you're not on slayer task because black mass is definitely better and it's particularly good for training if you're like rich you have chins because you can use 
Void Range to train with Chins, which is a bit better than using uh, regular Dehide and stuff like that. But yeah, you're not really going to be using it for the most part as a beginner. So let's talk about Ring, Archer's Ring at 1 range. That's pretty much all you have. And it's really expensive, so uh, it's okay if you don't have it. And for Iron Man, you're going to have to kill Dagonaut Supreme for it, which, yeah, that, that might motivate you to go bossing. Now for Cape, you want to go and get yourselves the Ava's Cape. So at 30, you can use the Attractor, 50, Ava's Accumulator. And at 70, you can get yourself the Ava's Assembler. Now you do have to do, go and do the respective quests, Animal Magnetism, and finally Dragon Slayer 2. And also having to kill Warcath 1 to 50 times. Just depends on your luck on how that goes. Now for Amulet, it's just the standard Power to Fury based on your budget. And then eventually, if you have the money, you can get yourself an Anguish. And as for Iron Man, all the amulets are just high crafting. And eventually for the Xenite, for the Anguish, you're going to have to kill Demonic Gorillas after Monkey Madness 2. Now for Boots, Snakeskin Boot is a good consideration at 30 range. Ranger's Boots, which is ridiculously expensive, that's an option at 40 range. Now, for a lot of you guys though, you're probably going to rock a God Dehyde Boots. Much more affordable starting at 70 range. Now for Iron Man, snakeskin boots can be obtained from killing snakes in a bunch of places. Tybo one I clean up minigame is a good one. Mostly Harmless after Cabin Fever is a good one. And there's a few other options. Now for Rangers, you will eventually do medium clues. So you can get those from the medium clues after some time. And God D High Boots is a bit RNG as well. You'll get those from hard clues. So you're going to stick with snakeskin until you get lucky from clue scrolls basically. Now gloves, you're just going to stick to Vlad D. High Vampresses or whatever color Vampresses you got up until you complete the recipe for the disaster quest and you can wear all the RFD gloves up to Barrows. They are basically the same range accuracy. So Helm is Coif at 20 range, Archer Helm at 45 range after Freemie Trials, and God Coif at 70 range. And for Iron Man, God Coif, you're going to have to get from Clue Scrolls. And of course, if you are on Slayer Tasks, definitely get yourself a Slayer Helm imbued at some point. Alright, we're finally moving to the magic training section, boys. The magic training section. Now, magic is quite complex because of spell choices and gear options, being able to train through combat and not through combat, you know, all that stuff. Now, there's a lot of good options outside of combat for training, but because it's PVM focused guy here, I'm only going to recommend some of the PVM routes of training methods. I'm going to cover normal mode, then Iron Man mode for spells just because they vary quite a bit. So let's talk about normal mode spell routes. So from 1 to 17, you're just going to use the standard strike spells, air all the way to fire strike. And from 17 to 35, you're going to go to the bolt spells. So air to fire bolt with chaos gauntlet, which is obtained from doing the family crest quest. You can fire bolt with high level alchemy and with an item of your choice like rune arrows to alk or something during combat, which gets you twice the experience per hour XP for the fire bolt XP for the alk which happens back to back. Now another option is to wear melee armor like iron armor with dehyde vamps so you can splash a spell like stun spell. Now another way to train magic is going to be using ancient magics. This is one of the more efficient ways to train but it can be very costly. Keep that in mind. So you can start using ancient magics as soon as I would say about 62 magic. So you want to just fire bolts all the way to 62 which will allow you to use smoke burst. So you can start uh, using ancient magics with smoke burst. You can smoke burst to 70 magic which will unlock ice burst. You want to use your ice burst spell on monkeys in monkey madness 1 and 2 tunnels and on slayer tasks involving things like dust devils, necrows, abyssal demons. Now for abyssal demons you want to use non-ice spell and stuff like smoke devils. You may also use ice barrage at 94 magic but it is substantially more expensive for a bit more XP. Bursting through a slayer task will cover your rune cost, whereas bursting at like monkeys will incur pretty much a full cost and it's really expensive. I will recommend just using ancient magics on slayer tasks because I don't expect you to have that much money. Now let's go with the AFK option. So what do I recommend for AFK option would be Firebolt with Chaos Gauntlets. You get to use Chaos Runes, which is really cheap compared to Death Runes and Blood Runes. And the Chaos Gauntlet gives you the extra premium damage. 
Now let's talk about spells for Iron Man bow for training. So from 1 to 17, it's just air to fire strike. 17 to 35 magic is just air to fire bolt with chaos gauntlets from the family crest quest. You want to fireball to 62 magic for smoke burst after doing desert treasure to unlock it. You want to smoke burst to 70 magic for ice burst. Now you're going to use ice burst during slayer tasks involving dust devils, necrals, abyssal demons, and smoke devils. And for Abyssal Demons though, you do want to use a non-ice spell though. Now there's also Ice Barrage at 94 magic, but it is more expensive, so you may actually incur some costs during your Slayer Task. Bursting through Slayer Task will cover your runes, most likely, and I do highly recommend training magic through Slayer exclusively towards later on because it will net you the fastest Slayer XP and will cover your rune costs. Unlike normal counts though, Iron Man magic training is definitely a lot more limited. There's other options of course, but they're just far slower than anything that Ancient Magic's casting can offer you. Now for AFK choice, I again still recommend Fireballs with Chaos Gauntlets because even for an Iron Man, it's very affordable and super AFK and decent XP. Let's talk about magic weapons. So for Noble Spell Books, all you really need is just normal staffs. Just Fire Staff is good. If you are planning on using fire spells, for example. Now, at 30 magic, you can get yourself a smoke battle stab, which does give you 10% more damage on your fire spells. It does cause like over a mil though, but yeah, it's pretty nice if you can afford it. And for ancient magic side, your ancient staff is going to be the cheapest option for auto casting. Other notable weapons that you can use later on for ancients would be Master Wand at 60, Nightmare Staff at 65, and Kodai Wand at 75. They're all quite expensive. And overall for Iron Man, you're just gonna stick to Ancient Staff when using Ancient Magics and probably just Fire Staff for normal spellbook training. Let's discuss Magic Armor, guys. So from 1 to 40 Magic, you can just find yourself some Magic Robes top and bottom. Now, you don't really need it because the stats are just so insignificant. So you can literally just train your Magic pretty much naked, maybe with some accessories, up to 40. Now at 40 magic though, this is where you want to invest. Get yourself full mystic rope set. Top, bottom, hat, gloves, and boots easily from the GE. And for Iron Man, you need to spend about 200k buying it from the magic guild with 60 magic requirement in Yanel. At 70 magic, you can get yourself an Aram's top and bottom to replace your mystic top and bottom. And for an Iron Man, you're going to have to get it from Barrel's minigame, which can be a bit RNG, but pretty realistic. And for helmet, you can stick with Mystic Hats or upgrade to Farseer Helmet at 45 magic. After the completion of Freemanic Trials, it is the same as Aram's Hood, so I highly recommend Farseer over Aram's Hood. For boots, you can use Mystic Boots at 40 magic and then 50 magic, you can get yourself Infinity Boots. Now for Iron Man Infinity Boots, you're going to have to do Mage Train Arena. Gloves is most likely going to be Combat Bracelet for a normal account to start off or miss the gloves at 40 magic for an Iron Man. Eventually, you'll be wearing RFD Barrels Gloves, and at the end game, it will be Tormented Bracelet with 75 hit points. And for Iron Man, you gotta make it yourself through Gorillas and Crafting. And for Amulet, Standard Amulet, up to 70 magic, which is where you will switch over to, finally, the Occult Necklace. For Iron Man, the Occult Necklace will come from Smoke Devils, either the Mob or the Boss at 93 Slayer. Now let's talk about the other components of your magic gear. So we're going to start with a cape. You can use Arty Cloak at level 1 all the way to 60 magic. And at 60 magic, get yourself a god cape from the Mage Arena of the Wilderness. And at 75 magic, upgrade the god cape to the Imbue god cape from the Mage Arena 2 version in the Wilderness. Now let's talk about the shield slots, so you can get yourself a Book of Darkness. After spending a few hundred K to buy the Ancient Pages, you need the page 1 to 4, and also Hard from the Deep Quest. For Iron Man, Book of Darkness will require you to do quite a bit of clues to get the 4 pages for it, which can take some time. Now for Ring, you're going to have to get Sears Ring. Pretty uh, affordable for normal accounts, however for Iron Man, you're going to have to kill Dagonoth Prime to get it. Money Making Section Let's talk about the final aspect of bossing preparations, money making. So money making, I will explain from how to make money at the beginning to like the mid-level stage and like the end game stage. 
and I'll cover it from normal account to admin account as they are quite different. So, all right, let's talk about normal money making methods from the beginning stage. So there's a ton of ways to make money. I do recommend asking your friends around maybe for some advice or check out some videos for some more ideas. I don't have time to list everything under the sun. So I'm gonna tell you the methods that I know from years of experience that works, is consistent and probably will work for years to come. So the first method is collecting Mortmire Fungus. Essentially, you go to the Mortania Swamp using the Silver Blessed Sickle. You can bless some logs and pick up the Mortmire Fungus and bank the Mortmire Fungus when you have a full inventory. So my recommended things for this method is to complete Priest and Peril and also Nature Spare Quest for the Silver Blessed Sickle and access to Mortania. You also want Fairy Tale Part 2 partially done so you can access the Fairy Ring with your Draman Staff. And also you want to do Artie Diary up to easy for the Arty Cloak 1. So essentially with Arty Cloak 1, you can teleport to the Monastery by Arty, which gives you unlimited prayer. And then you just walk a short distance to the Fairy Ring and use the Fairy Ring to teleport to the Mauritania Swamp, which is code PKR. You go down the little pond, there's going to be a few logs near each other. Just stay in the middle, bless. Pick up the Mauritania Funkus, and then use something like a Ring of Dueling to teleport to a bank. And then repeat the process again. That's it. It's a few hundred K GP and R. At early stages, combat is not going to get you much money, so you're going to have to rely on some skilling. Luckily, there's a bunch of AFK skilling methods that are pretty good. Mudlalo mine at 30 mining is pretty good. Just sell the ores that you get. Spinning bow strings with flax at 15 crafting at Lumbridge Castle, second floor, is pretty good money too. It's like 100k an hour guaranteed. Fishing lobsters at 40 is pretty good. A lot of you guys already know this one, but yes, it's truly stood the test of time. Next, we are going to cover the middle stage money making. I will say training through Slayer will provide consistent levels of GP to keep up your food, potions, and rune costs. Slayer profits should cover all your medium level gear purchases. Remember to try to balance between AFK and Slayer tasks as Slayer is definitely crucial for bossing later on. Another option is Barrow's minigame. It's a good way to start your bossing journey and I'll elaborate more during the bossing ladder guide in the future. This will cover some good profit. I do have a guide on how to start Barrow's for beginners so I'll link that in the description. Now let's talk about the high level money making. I won't go into too in depth because this is where the bossing ladder stuff makes more sense to cover since high level money making from a PVM perspective implies that you're already in the bossing stage. But this is just, you know, getting ready for bossing. But essentially when you start off bossing like the lower end bosses like Barrows, Dagonoth Kings, Grotesque Guardians, etc. You're probably going to make at least a few hundred K GP to start off an hour. And then you're probably going to get some lucky hours and make over a mil. And then higher level bosses like Floor Cat and Zoro, it's pretty easy to make over a mil an hour. When you do reach this theoretical stage though, I will say that a lot of the money that you make on the bosses that you initially start off with will be used to buy better gear so that you can gradually do stronger and harder bosses. So that's kind of like the long term progression, you know, of PVMing and how it's enjoyable, I guess, is earning money doing the things that you can so you can do other things and learn new bosses and just keep that cycle going until you pretty much build the account with all the stuff that you ever want and experiencing all the content that's out there in terms of PVM. But yeah, I will elaborate much more on that in the upcoming companion guide, the bossing ladder guide. Let's talk about money making on an Iron Man. So to start off, you want to get that early 10,000 GP from Security Stronghold. From the third floor, just make sure you bring some food. Another option is to collect steel plate bodies in the lava maze center. Recommended to get a looting bag though to store more steel plate bodies for inventory. You can get them by killing thugs under Etro. It's quite tedious and risky because of PKers, but it's really reliable money. You want to sell your steel plate bodies to the Farag armor shop. And you want to sell like maybe three or four at a time and hot worlds. That way you can get more money out of your steel plate bodies. You're gonna need a knife and some food though for this method. Just remember though, you don't need a lot of money to start off. Maybe like 10 to 20k at a time is good enough to get you going. Money will start becoming a bit more necessary though shortly after that. Once you get to like the late early stage, 
I do recommend finishing the Freedom League Trial Quest because you're going to access one of the best raw GP methods for early Iron Man as soon as you finish this quest. After Trials, you have access to Ice Trolls when you start the Freedom League Isles quest. They're state spotable and are very good early range and magic training. You can make several hundred thousand GP training both range and magic to like 50s and 60s. It's nice to get 55 magic here so you can access high level alchemy which will be the biggest tool for making GP as you can turn a bunch of drops later on into physical gold. You can easily fund the ammo and runes from killing them and earn massive profit at an early stage. My recommended spot is north of Jatizo. There is a safe spot with two cool ore. If any of these rangers from the east side spots you, an easy way to unaggro is to go all the way to the bridge and stay there and they can't reach you. And you can either hot world or wait for it to move away. And then you can come back to the cold rocks. But if you are de-aggroed, as in they're not, you know, aggressive towards you, I recommend going to this spot because you want to kill the ice troll runs, actually, because they drop the same exact things as the males, except they have 20 less HP, which means you can get more drops for the ammo that you use. Another easy spot is under Jatizo, the mine. It's easier to set up, but the spot's not as good because uh, there's less things to kill there. When you start preparing for bossing though, you will definitely need a lot more GP. But luckily, GP just comes passively through Slayer. Iron Man are highly recommended to get into Slayer early on once you get some decent gear. Which if you did stuff like Ice Trolls, should cover all the bunny for the rune armor and like the dragon items like dragon scimitars. A lot of bossing is Slayer level required, like Cerberus and a ton of your really good gear. It comes exclusively from Slayer, so you might as well do it anyways. Refer to the Active Slayer section in the video for more about how to train through Slayer. Around 65 Slayer, the money will start rolling in because you have access to Dust Devils. They drop a lot of good alkables. Slayer creatures with high reward slash GP value are Karas at 70, Skeletal Wyverns at 72, Gargoyles at 75, Necrowls are 80. Other notable ones are Spiritual Warriors and Worms. There's other good GP tasks like Brutal Blacks, but they're just a bit too hard for someone starting out though. You will make millions at this stage when you access these Slayer creatures and will cover for most pressing matters involving GP. Beyond this point, GP is mostly needed for buying runes, construction training and house furnishing, funding your kingdom, quicker potion making at Narda, covering for the death penalty, and some others. Also note that you'll get a ton of GP when you actually go do bossing and will cover all your GP needs for the most part. So the final part of this guide is going to give you a preview for the bossing ladder aka the bossing routes that you can take. I'm going to have one for main accounts and I'm going to have one for Iron Man. So I do realize that the next video which is the actual bossing ladder guide will take a long time to make and may not come out for a long time. So I hope these two uh, roadmap slash bossing ladder maps will give you guys a good idea of how to go about bossing once you finish everything that I've mentioned in this guide already in the previous sections. And basically it's just top to bottom in terms of the progression that you follow in the map and there's going to be some points where there's deviations. Anything that is in the center is basically like the core bosses that you should do and anything on like the right side tends to be bosses that are like a side thing they're not as critical to either your money making or for an iron man your like overall item progression so the first bossing ladder is going to be for normal accounts how i ranked the bossing order is based on three things so the first one is the overall accessibility which means how long it takes to get the requirements to kill the bosses like questing or stats number two is how much potential money you can make and number three is how overall difficult it is going to be let me explain the money making aspects of the roadmap here so the only two bosses that don't make money is jad and zuck you only do those two bosses for the capes and for the challenge every other boss will make you good money and bosses that are more central are the bosses that are more reliable money making and of course it's going to be ranked from top to bottom so barrows at the very top is your first kind of like consistent money making boss and we will slowly progress down to things like dk's kraken and eventually you'll hit things like vorkath and zora and eventually 
maybe around the same time actually would be God Wars. Uh, depends on if you have teammates or not, because the difficulty will change depending on that. And uh, finally, you'll get into higher level Slayer bosses like Cerberus even and like Hydra, which is all very good money, similar to things like Zora and Vorkath. And at the bottom is going to be things like Theater of Blood and Chamber of Xerix, uh, the Gauntlets, which is basically the end game money makers for PVM for the most part. And you have some other things like Nightmare and Corp, which is like the riskier money makers. They, they make a lot of money, but it's very like rare. So you kind of have to win the lottery sort of thing. There's also a few bosses on the right side that I would consider worth doing. But maybe not as important to the general like bossing ladder, but you should still consider doing them. It's time to cover the bossing roadmap for Iron Man, generally speaking. So there are three criteria in how I sorted the bosses. The first one is general accessibility, so how long it takes to get ready for the boss. And number two is bossing drop synergy. What I mean by that is some bosses drops items that help you at other bosses, usually more difficult ones. So I rank it based on that quite a bit. And number three is, of course, the overall difficulty because you're going to be getting all the drops from the bosses themselves. While main accounts enjoy a lot of money making, Iron Man's have to enjoy something a bit different because you can't buy a lot of your gear with money. Instead, you focus on this thing called Drop Synergy, trademark. Because the idea is to work on easier bosses at the start so that you can get their drops and use those drops so that you can fight stronger bosses and keep the cycle going till the very end. That is a lot of the unique joys of Iron Man. So I'm going to focus on explaining to you drop synergy of this roadmap. So you're probably going to start off something like crazy archaeologists and barrels for rune crossbow and tank armor because then you can use those armor to fight Rex for a berserk ring so that you can fight Jaff for the fire cape so that you can train to 87 slayer and eventually kill kraken for the trident because the trident will allow you to fight zora fairly comfortably and which will unlock things like a stronger trident and the blowpipe with the blowpipe unlocked you're able to do so many more bosses opens up to pretty much the mid to late game bossing and eventually you'll do some more slayer bosses like cerberus for like best and slot boots god wars like Zamrak boss for the Zami Spear, which will eventually turn into something like a Dragon Hunter Lance, which you can then use at things like Chambers of Zerg, an endgame content, so you can fight against Ulm with it. But hopefully this is starting to make sense when I mean synergy. So I'll give you some more examples of synergy. So we have Zilliana, which drops the Armadillo Crossbow. You can use that to fight Kriara for your best in slot range armor and you might even use it at Zuck one day for the Inferno Cape. Another example of synergy is the Corrupted Gauntlets that you can get the Blade of Sounder from so you can use it at Theater of Blood to get a bunch of best in slot gear like Scythe of Vitzer and like the Sing Staff. And there are of course bosses on the right I would say that doesn't synergize well and you can kind of just do them whenever you want. And there are Things like Corp and Nightmare, which drops best and saw stuff, but they're so rare that it's probably not worth it for most of you guys due to the amount of time that it takes. Congratulations, young grasshoppers. You've made it to the end of the video. I hope this video gives you the knowledge and motivation to, yeah, help you make a sick account and enjoy the game through PVM. And a few things to mention. I do have a word version of this guide in the description. And if anything big changes because of updates, I'll update it there. And also, I do stream on Twitch afternoon times in the US. And the reason why I mention this is because I can help you further on Twitch. So if you have a question about RuneScape, especially PVM, that you don't know about or this guy does not cover, then I'm your guy. I will be more than happy to help you on Twitch as well. Anyways, thanks again for watching. And I will see you guys very soon with another video. Take care.